the names and I didn't really care to I just want the money so the mission I get here to is simple I joined some resistance click Blow up the reactor then we split that's it And they go on about saving the planet on a precious What's good everyone welcome to another episode of Gamers 411 I am your host tonight Tonight we have special guest tonight dropping in and out is Blacksmith himself We have MWV Dragon we have Travis T-shirt time, Mr. Hilliard. We'll talk about that later. And then we have myself, Hunk Fat. So, anyways, guys, how you guys doing tonight? Everything going good? Yeah. Yep, everything's going fine. Everything's right. good on mine. That's All right, cracking. sounds good. Well, let's get the show started. Some interesting topics this week. Um, we're going to get right to it. We're going to save the bigger one for later. But let's go right down to a pretty interesting topic that's been floating around the net and that I've been watching the last couple of days. Uh, IGN, Kotaku, and a few other sites have been posting a lot of articles on this, and this is talking about the new Sony Orbs, which is pretty much the dev kit name, I assume is the dev kit name, of the successor to the PlayStation 3. Uh, the interesting about these dev kits, or talking about this dev kits that have been going out since January to developers, um, is it a little early for new consoles to come out? I don't think so. I think two years is about the right time that developers get their dev kits ahead of time before they start working on their games for launch day. Um, me and Travis have talked about this several times that uh, all the other sites are re pretty much reporting the same thing about these dev kits coming out. One thing I'd like to touch on tonight is that, and which I think it is true about this new console you know, coming to, coming to a head eventually, is that... They are taking the same approach they are doing with the Vita. They're doing a lot of uh, off-the-shelf, high-end components, um, like the Vita did, to make everything developer-friendly, which is a big bonus. And I know developers have been praising that, and that's what they want in the Vita, so I can't see them not doing that with the next generation PlayStation. Um, you know, IGN covered a pretty good article that we talked about, that I talked about with a buddy yesterday, uh, and a few other sites have been saying the same thing that I've been saying is that Sony, basically the, the, the specs so far in the dev kits are a AMD uh, processor, 64-bit, which is pretty impressive if true, but three or four different developers have silently said yes, that's in there. Uh, two developers have came out and says two to four gigs of RAM, which makes sense. I believe when I see it, that's awful high for a console, but I think they need to do that because they know that tablets, smartphones, and, and a lot of handheld devices are going for the gig and, uh, and more nowadays uh, so that's pretty interesting to me um, graphics card they're not t saying one word about that uh, I think Sony will go proprietary custom state-of-the-art graphics card I don't think they're gonna go off the shelf with that one I think they're gonna do something in-house with that um, what do you guys think about that Do you guys really think that Sony will talk about a future generation console this year and possibly launch 2013 in the fall like a lot of rumors are predicting or do you think that this is a lot of smoke and wind and we may not hear anything until next year? Let's go with Blacksmith on this one since he's a developer. What do you think, Black? You really think that this year, this E3, Sony on stage with the Vita already out and with The Last Guardian coming out and many other exclusives that Sony's known for, do you really think that they're going to come out with a new console or at least talk about this one this year? What do you got? I doubt it. Um, they just released a new piece of hardware. They're trying to generate as much sales and as much uh, perspective and, and put the light as bright as they can on the Vita. And it's, it's, a, it's a good piece of hardware. I mean, I'm, I'm loving mines. And it definitely it, it hasn't been tapped to its full potential. So for no them to kind of, you know, turn around and, and give gamers another system to focus on just really as in a business standpoint wouldn't make sense and also you know as far as the community community wise it really did wouldn't be really a good tack uh sorry a good business tactic for them to to do that you know because it's they they if you look at the way they deploy their systems they they do it in increments you know there's never like two systems on right on top of each other so what i what i think is going on is is, is just rumors about the, the dev kits you know little sprinkles of, of hope that you know everyone wants to hear to get excited about what sony's coming to the table with because microsoft kind of did the same thing earlier so it's just it's just 
I think it's a lot of smoke and mirrors. I think this E3 is going to be not going to have any great system launch or there's not going to be any surprise with new systems. I think 2014, 2015 is when we'll start to see a lot of the the real, you know, hardware specs and more accurate representations of what these new games will be like. I, I feel you on that one, but so, so you really think 2014, 2015, you don't think 2013 at, at all for anything? I think that what they'll do in 2013, maybe at 2013 E3, they might elude at some functionality between the Vita and another console, but there's, the, Sony always has these one to two year gaps between hardware drops. True. So I, I don't I don't suspect that they'll you'll see you'll see any kind of you know true presentations until 2014 because they said that they're, they're going for you know to, they're trying to expand the PlayStation 3's life cycle right now I think it's about at 10 years so that will be around about 2014 2015 when yeah, they're no. gonna they're gonna deploy their next console, so okay. you know I, I just I just really don't see it happening. Yeah, you know, and I know me and Travis have talked about this before. Um, I, I think Microsoft would be the one first to jump the gun and, and say something. I don't, I'm still believe it when I see it when it comes to E3 this year on from Microsoft and Sony uh, even talking about next gen consoles. Uh, now I know we all know we Wii U is going to do a re unveiling at e3 um they're going to give us the specs they're going to give us the launch titles they're going to talk about this uh network they've been working on their online new infrastructure they've been working on for the last two three years so that thing that i think i think microsoft and sony are going to sit back and watch see what nintendo does no one's really scared of nintendo but i think a lot of focus is what's nintendo going to do they're very very quiet but it's interesting to see it's exciting uh, me personally i don't see them announcing shit this year i think 2013 early 2013 sony might come out of the woodwork and say okay we're going to start talking about our next generation console, maybe. You know, I think they're still waiting to see what Microsoft does. And I think they're both playing cat and mouse. And uh, they're kind of both looking at each other going, you're going to launch your new console? You're going to talk about it yet? And they're kind of like going back and forth, you know, silently through, you know, sites and word of mouth about what they're going to do. It, it's coming. I don't know. I can't pinpoint it. It's funny. Every day I have a different analogy of when it's going to happen. But, Travis, we've talked about this before. I'd love to hear your take on this one. What do you think? Next generation PlayStation Orbis. And I do like the name. I, I like them getting away from numbers, separating their consoles. I kind of like that. But anyways, what, what, what do you got on this one? you think this uh, something's going to happen this year or you think it's a lot of smoke and mirrors? So here's the thing. Here's my take on it. Um, I think both Microsoft and Sony underestimated Nintendo last time with the Wii. And look at what happened. They got their asses handed to them in the market. Now, we're not talking about quality software. We're not talking about anything but console sales. That is very... I mean, Nintendo's been printing their own money. They're just making it. And I can't see Microsoft and Sony saying, okay, cool, you killed us last year at E3 by unveiling a new console. Everyone knew it was kind of coming. We knew it was about to happen. That Not only can they not let them get their ass handed to them for a second year at E3, because then it just starts taking all the focus off of the consoles uh, for the biggest event of the year. Plus, if the Wii U is that much stronger from what everyone's saying, and what's going to happen? Third parties are going to use the Wii U as the lead platform. That Did means, you imagine that? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, just picture every single third party game looking better on, on a Nintendo console. Do well, you want to get. Mean, go ahead. No, go ahead. You know, no, no. You're right because, and I don't mean to cut you off. I mean, already. Randy Pitchford says that Alien uh, Colonial Marines is going to be the best version on the Wii U. Uh, rumor has it that Assassin's Creed 3 is going to be the superior version on the Wii U. Um, and they're not saying why, but Ubisoft has hinted at that. And the other game is Darksiders 2 right now seems to be running the best on the Wii U. Which... Uh, and they've said this from day one since they talked about the Wii U last year at E3. And ever since then, those three developers have still said, yes, this multi-platform game is running the best on this new system that we can't talk about the specs right now. So E3 is going to be interesting to see just, when 
Nintendo says, hey, here's the specs. I think we're, I, listen, I know we've talked about this before. I think we may be underestimating Nintendo this generation, especially with this new console coming out. We don't know squat, but go ahead, Travis, well, continue. Especially if there's, if say there's going to be three more years on the market with this console. Do you really want somebody who just kicked your ass in, in a console race to then have another three more years of kicking your fucking teeth in? Not only, it, we don't know how it's going to sell. We don't know that. But the perception from the CEO and management standpoint is they just kicked our ass. We can't let that, let that happen again. Either Microsoft or Sony, because everyone knows if you're a real true core gamer, you're gaming on an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3. No one looks at their Wii and says, that's my core console. But if all the hardcore AAA titles are looking the best on the Wii U, it should change its perspective real quick. People are going to be like, oh, yeah. especially oh, yeah. if, it, if I'm beasting. If I don't have to use a tablet and I can use a traditional controller... And they've got a good online infrastructure that's comparable to Xbox Live and PSN. You got some real power and some real. That's a real threat for Sony and Microsoft. They cannot afford their console sales aren't doing enough to really say, okay, we can't take a risk. What I think will happen is at the very most, if they came out either Microsoft or Sony, I'm thinking Sony could just do this because it's very, very. It, it would make sense right about now. Causes in charge now, new business structure, very clear-cut agenda is come out and do a tech demo. Just show tech demos, not show the console. Shoot these. Mm-hmm. This is like what our our target is going to be. And it's going to probably dwarf what the Wii U can do. And that's what they're going to want to do. They want – both Microsoft and Sony are going to want to snuff any attempt that the Nintendo has at stealing another E3. I mean, I just now, can't see. Uh, hold on, can I can I interject? Go ahead. Because you guys, you guys keep saying like Nintendo's presentation was the best at last year's E3, and no, but uh, sorry, I didn't mean no. to come off like that. That's not what I was. Intending. And it, because me personally, I felt like Sony's presentation, yes, had definitely had the most flair and the biggest announcements when they announced the Vita and the price point. So, yeah, that was that was that was the, that was the nail biter right there for, and we were at the press conference, and it was great, and that was definitely sealed the deal for me. And 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 with that being said, I felt like what Nintendo, not only what they have to, what they had to offer as far as like tech demos, it was severely unimpressive, um, but also the games that they had at their booth were just abysmal. They were they were Wii oh, they games. Were jokes. Yeah, they yeah, were. They were Wii games that you know really didn't utilize the, the um the Wii U tablet well, and they just weren't fun. So I don't I, I think that Nintendo will have more announcements, but it's because they're falling behind. Wii U Wii U sales. I'm sorry, excuse me. Wii sales have has severely diminished. Um. You know, console, major console sales. I shouldn't say major console because the Wii is a major console. But uh, the core console sales are starting to, to to rise. And I also feel like we have not yet seen the true power of these systems. No, we haven't. You know? yet. And, and that's what I said earlier with the Wii U. We don't know squat. I mean, we've heard quad-core processors, possibly i5s, i7s running in there, an AMD chipset. We've heard graphics card. We, we don't even know what media drive Nintendo is going to put in the Wii U. It might not even be disk based. Although the, uh, rumor has it Nintendo is coming out with proprietary 25 gig Blu-ray type disk, but that they made themselves because they're all about in-house products. But we don't they know can't, squat. They, they can't do that. They can't create a, a version of a Blu-ray because Sony no. holds proprietary licenses. Well, I'm saying I'm, I'm saying they're going to they're going to come out with their own high definition disk drive that's proprietary. Is what I heard. They can do that easily. In fact, I know an Israeli company wanted to build it from Microsoft years ago. Microsoft turned it down because they had signed on with HD DVD, and that failed. But not not to drag on to this side of the podcast, but let's – let's real quick, Travis, what you were saying about the Wii U controller. Um, let me tell you something. I had hands-on experience with E3. It's a thousand times more comfortable than the Vita. I can tell you that right now. It's very wow. comfortable. Fits in your – did, did you try it, Black? Yeah, I did. What did you it's, think about it? I it, loved it. If it, it, it feels cumbersome, it it I, I didn't feel it was cumbersome. I, I I thought it would be, but from what it felt in my hand, if it, it it fit in my hand, I got bigger hands than most people, but it fit in my hand perfectly. 
Um, the only thing I didn't like about the tablet controller, and I hope Nintendo fixes it, is that they give us actual analog sticks instead of the little discs. I don't, I don't, not a big fan of those discs. Uh, if they really want to get the hardcore market, uh, they need to get rid of that those little slider disc on each side. They need to give us real thumbsticks. They may change that. We don't know. I mean, Nintendo's had their lips sealed since day, since the E3, and we've got nothing out of them. So. Anyways, let's let's move on from that one. But let me get the hold dragon. On, hold on, hold on, uh, hold on. One second, one second. I just I, I gotta say one thing. Blacksmith, I got. I think you're on point with the cumbersome. Here's the thing I noticed with the Wii U, uh, or sorry, with the Vita, and this is going to be even more so. Uh, core gamers, we don't pl- core gamers don't play for 45 minutes. We don't play for an hour. We don't play for two hours. A uh, core mm-hmm. gamer, when it's late, everyone's asleep, or you got the free time, you kill it. You go hours in. So. Five hour session. Uh, yeah, hell yeah, easily. And you know me, I did Kingdoms of Amalur. I was sleeping on my fucking couch. So uh, if I have to hold a tablet for eight hours, my wrists are dead. I won't play for a couple of days. And I, I can I can't see that being their main push is that for a core consumer gamer and say, hey, you're gonna hold this big bulky device for I mean Battlefield, Battlefield. You gonna see a core FPS game be a gamer like that holding a tablet for hours on end, perfecting their uh, like their gaming skills? Hell no! Hell no! A fighting speaking game. Speaking of the tablet, sorry, go uh, ahead. Uh, uh, I was just saying that you know a fighting gamer, it's all about comfortability in your hand. If you don't have a, a fight stick and you're using a controller, it's about comfortable. It's got to be comfortable, not wasting on your wrist, not wasting on your fingers. All your energy has to be utilized in your movements. That Wii U, you're taking so much energy just holding that uh, tablet up, you're not going to be able to focus on your movements. A Marvel game? Pfft, uh-uh. Ain't happening. The thing well, uh, the uh, thing that's concerning me, I just want to say this one thing, and, and we could, I know we can move on if, if you guys want. Um, but the the whole, the thing that, that is most unimpressive about what I'm seeing from the Wii U is the fact that you are not going to be able to get the same game that you see on your screen on the tablet. With the high, and I'm speaking of the higher level games, the higher higher resolution games, those are you're not going to be able to mirror that gameplay on your tablet. When you look at the PlayStation Vita, yes, the 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 game that you will see on the Vita is going to be a lower resolution ver, lower resolution version, but it's going to be the actual game that you're playing in your PlayStation Three, and that functionality has not been. I have I haven't heard anywhere where that functionality will be available with the Wii U, so that concerns me, and I, I just really don't think you know. Of course, Nintendo loves to pull you know r- uh, rabbits out of their ass, so <laughs> you know they, they're going to find some way to market the hell out of it. But I, I I'm still I'm I'm not lining I'm not ready to line up for the Wii U as yet. Okay. Uh, like I said, we I mean we got off topic a little bit with that. We'll we'll see what happens. But uh, Dragon, what do you what do you think about this whole Sony rumor and the uh, the orbs? What do, what do you got on it? Um, yeah, I mean uh, the orbs seems like it would be looks uh pretty decent uh, and everything. I mean uh, they they do have one rumor on the the GPU, but really doesn't mean much. It's just uh, that says that it's uh, probably going to be running a AMD uh, Southern Islands uh, GPU, which is just doesn't really mean anything because that's just the the family of the GPU, which is the newer uh, AMD uh, GPUs that just came out uh, earlier this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think it's going to be a uh, coming out, in, you know, in twenty probably not twenty thirteen. I see it probably a twenty fourteen year that'd be coming out. Probably might they might release some sort of information at E three twenty thirteen. Yeah, I agree. I, I think this year we're not going to see anything either. I, I think this is internet smoke and mirrors as usual. I mean, there's definitely dev kits, I'm sure, out there. And Microsoft sure as hell has their dev kits out there right now. But I'm thinking 2013, 2014 range. But, again, all eyes are on E3 this year. See what Nintendo really brings to the table. And if they don't, if they bring something to the table and they unveil what they have and Microsoft knows and Sony knows that their specs are going to blow it away, they're not going to rush it to the market. But if Wii U comes out... And they say, hey, we've got this, this, and that in our hardware, and they're going to be like, holy shit. And then that might accelerate things. So I think everything's going to be dictated and plays out after E3 2012. So let's not jump the gun on that one. But all right, let's move on to our uh, next, to- next topic because we dwelled a little bit too long on this one. But uh, next topic, real quick Max Payne 3 multiplayer sending shockwaves through the internet. Now, personally, me, 
I was ecstatic when I saw the multiplayer. And I was really ecstatic about when I saw how they implemented uh, bullet time in multiplayer, which I thought was very, very, very cool. Because I knew they were talking about doing it. I'm like, well, how the hell are they going to do that? Um, and, and from what I've seen on the multiplayer, the game looks going like to be fun. It's going to be rock solid. It's, you're going to feel very connected to your player being in that third person and being in third person, almost like a distant third person mode to a degree. Um, one thing I do like about Max Payne 3 um, is that your character and I, I believe the class or your gang will be able to carry over the Grand Theft Auto 5. So the details are a little scarce on that one. That's going to be interesting on, on what that happens there. But me personally, I don't know if you guys seen the trailer. I'm blown. I thought the trailer was great. Um, you know, tra Travis will probably talk about this a little bit here in a second about the graphics didn't look up to par to the single player. But, you know, usually multiplayer graphics do take a little bit of a hit. But I, I didn't really see a much of a hit to me because I did double. I did watch it a few times. And, yeah, the single player is probably a little shiny, a little bit more detailed. But that was just a very, very first reveal of multiplayer. And I tell you what, the graphics look pretty damn close to the uh, single player. But, Travis, what do you think about Max Payne 3 as a whole? I mean, what do you think about them going multiplayer for the first time in the Max Payne, Payne game? Because, you know, me personally, I'm, I'm a huge Max Payne fan. I love the first one. I would do anything for an HD remake. But uh, what did you think about the trailer? What did you see? Um, the gameplay looks dope. I'm not going to lie. Having no people, doubt. like, I like how what they did with the... Uh the bullet time where it only affects the person that's directly in your sights. So right. it's not like you go into bullet time and then everyone else is kind of fucked. It, it, right. it, they really made it nice and smooth so it impacts the person that you're trying to kill at that one point in time. Um, I like how when you're doing a lot of the – a lot of games fall apart when they take uh, – they don't take all the assets and the animations and the type of combat mechanics from the single player and incorporate them into the multiplayer. That's when it feels like you had two different teams developing, and you can see a lot of the same mechanics. As far as I can tell, it seems to be a one-for-one -one type of mechanics from the single player getting uh, carried over to the multiplayer. Things like from a, uh, a bullet time shooting to hitting the ground to rolling around and shooting while somebody while you're on the ground, that changes the way people fight because, you know... You're aiming for a torso and headshot. The guy's in the air, so you already got a smaller place to hit body. And then they hit on the ground, so now you're you're switching your reticle to uh, aiming down at the ground, and that takes your whole attention away from other people that are trying to kill you. I, I thought that was crazy, but you know, going to the graphics part, every single game when they do multiplayer, it never looks as good as a single player. They look good, but they never look as good. But I did notice things like one of the big pieces i really noticed in the single player trailers that we've seen so far is that max Payne, he is so smooth in his animations his clothing the the textures wrinkle and contour and maneuver his veins on yep. his arms yeah it all moves so organically and then you watch the uh the mp trailer and with the exception of max Payne and his buddy Everyone else, you look at their body, and it's very – it's a, ten times more stiff. It's a lot more stiff. Yes, it has a lot of the shifting mechanics with the weight and stuff, but if you look at the way they maneuver and the way their muscles move and the way their clothing moves, it's a lot more static. And to me, it's like, okay, I know, I know that that's going to happen, but – Ign ignoring that, is it important? No, not really, not to the gameplay mechanics, but from a graphical fidelity standpoint and the aesthetics, it does for people like me, it does it, it matters a lot to have that kind of nice little touches, but you do notice in the trailer that Max Payne, he still has the nice clothing animations when he's jumping and moving and contorting, it's not as clean but it's still there, so when you're playing the mode where you uh play where you either hunt down somebody who's max and you kill him and you uh take up his role and now everyone's t going after you and his buddy uh, it, he he looks so it's almost like he looks 10 times better than the other character models and that to me i don't like when developers say okay he's the primary character so we're going to focus all of our attention on making him look good and everyone else look decent it, to me i'd rather have everything look balanced i mean take a little bit away from one so everything looks a little bit more smoothed out instead of you know what happened with uh what was it gran turismo 5 where you know the certain cars looked really good and other cars uh, not so much so right that, that's just my take on it it looks dope i cannot wait to get into the multiplayer because i like tpss and i like uh you know 
really good combat mechanics and it looks like it's got some dope ma maneuvering yeah it does it looks good i love how you can roll around on the ground and change your aim how you're shooting uh it's gonna be an interesting game and it looks like they're gonna put a nice little twist of multiplayer with bullet time added in there and and they're only talking about very little about the features in the game so i'm very excited for max Payne 3 um like i said i would love to see rockstar come out with a special edition uh, bundle with uh, a remake of the first game in HD. That's just you know personal wish, but I don't think it's going to happen. But hey, Dragon, did you see the uh, the trailer? Yeah, I got a I got a look at that trailer. It was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I would really like to see a development diary on uh, the bold time stuff and everything. It seems pretty interesting how, how it operates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely does. I mean, it's it's gonna be a neat game. I'm I'm excited for Max Payne. It's it's actually one of my most looked forward to games coming up. In fact, I have nothing on the radar between now and May. Uh, there's nothing in April I'm interested in. Uh, May May is when this game shows up. I can't wait to see it. But uh, uh, Blacksmith, what do you think about uh, Max Payne Three multiplayer? Are you interested in getting it? Oh, I'm definitely getting that one. I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, I I love the fact that they're using uh new well they, they're actually revamping uh gameplay mechanics that have been done in the past i don't know if you guys uh remember there was a game that uh starred chow young fat and i wanted to call it hard boil but i know that's not the game that's the name uh, of the stranglehold, movie. stranglehold 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 yes. stranglehold i think what they're doing is they're taking the aspects of Stranglehold's multiplayer and actually getting them right. Because with that game, and Stranglehold also had like a bullet time effect in multiplayer where they actually would slow down and you were able to to, to focus on the, your assailant and, and get a better beat on them. But everyone in the multiplayer would slow down. So if you were just running up a, a, a pair of stairs and and someone got the, uh, the bullet time... Uh, uh, perk, perk, you would go, you would st start to slowly run up the stairs, and you wouldn't know what's happening, and you might catch a bullet to the side of your ear, you know, <laughs> just because, you, you know, this guy, he, he has you in his aim, but you can't really tell, because you're you're maneuvering, so I feel like they're actually taking gameplay mechanics that have been done, it's nothing new, it's gameplay mechanics that have been done, but this time they're doing them right. So I'm really excited for it. Um, I'm definitely a Max Payne fan. I play both the games. I love both games. Uh, I'm just, I'm really ready for it. And you're right, there's not much coming out uh, in that time. I think Prototype 2 is the only thing that's on my radar in between April and, and June. Yeah, so, yeah, prototype definitely, is still a, oh, still a wait and see, but yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I, I can't wait for Max Payne. Every every new development diary they show on YouTube or whatever they release their videos, I'm just like, this my mouth is open, going, damn, I can't wait to get a hold of it. I mean, I'm very, very, very excited for the game. So, it, it's gonna be good. I like the Grand Theft Auto Five tie-in. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. But let's get to our big topic of tonight, and then we'll wrap up the show. Uh, Robert Bowling, creative director of Infinity Ward leaving or maybe being fired from Activision. Uh, I find it kind of interesting about what's coming out, although Bowling himself really hasn't said anything, um, and Activision has really not seen too much, but the word is on the street is that he was all about giving free DLC away, especially when it came to old maps from Call of Duty 4, and he he really made it clear that he thinks that we it, they should be free, People have played those maps before. Why recharge them for maps that came out in 2007? And I agree. I mean, I'm set to stand up. I applaud the guy for saying that. Uh, I've never been a big Robert Bowling fan because he's always been, well, as of recently to me, he's been more of the Activision puppet for Call of Duty. And if I was going to pay that kind of money, I would too. But he did say, you know, him by him saying that and possibly causing him his job, I salute the guy. He did, a, you know, that's very noble for him to say that. You know, now we'll find out in the coming weeks if he was fired, let go, retired. Who knows? We don't know. But, you know, he did. And I know Activision has not been happy with him lately, always referring to Call of Duty 4 being the best Call of Duty ever made. And they're always trying to recapture that feeling. And I think gamers started catching on to it and be like, well, 
if you guys are trying to recapture the feeling, why is every Call of Duty since then not the same and not living up to that type of standard? Why are you guys changing this and that? You know, who knows? I don't want to get into a big, big Call of Duty discussion or or ran over this, but um, it's interesting that the face, the one guy left at Infinity Ward is is gone. And it's like, now where does the franchise go? Where does Call of Duty go? Because he was really the only guy that people listen to nowadays. And, and I hope we just don't get a bunch of suits in there and just dictating and moving the Call of Duty franchise around just for numbers and money. Because now if the rumor is true about Black Ops 2, I tell you what, the gameplay uh, modes, man, they're taking a lot from Modern Warfare 3 and bringing it all over. And I just see another Call of Duty doing the same thing. But I want to see you uh, with Travis. Travis, what do you think about Robert Bowling leaving Infinity War? Do you think it's good for Infinity War or do you think this is a, a bad move and Activision wanted to shut him up? Um, my personal take, I, I think this is a problem. You can't have too many of the big dogs who made the franchise what it is leave before you lose that sauce and the more you take away the more you diminish the franchise and yes you can get good people to fill the spot new young blood to you know bolster the title but the problem with it is is when a, a dev speaks out passionately about doing right by the consumers and doing right by the fan base that's built your product to you know whether he walked away from the company or was fired from the company activision should have done everything they could to keep him and i mean this is all speculation all rumors we don't know with any confirmation what was the triggering mechanism but the fact that he's leaving the company is going to hurt you know the franchise i mean realistically what other big face names for the franchise are really there that people know that people resonate with that can mm -hmm. i mean he has a very i'll say this every every time i watch him talk or any article mm -hmm. i read of, uh, that has an, an interview with him you can relate to him he's a nice guy he comes off very cool you can just he seems like a dude you want to sit down and just chill and have a beer with and play a game yeah. with oh yeah oh yeah he, he just did a podcast uh, with um uh, Kevin Pereira and those guys over at G4, and uh, they were talking about Call of Duty, and then the next day is when the announcement came that he got let go. You know, it's, it's almost like Frank O'Connor leaving Halo. Thank God he stayed with 343 Industries for Halo, or else Halo would, the next generation of Halo games could be a total buzz. At least one of the main faces from Bungie is still there, and this is the same thing I feel with Robert Bowling, although he's not the original two guys that left and started their own company. No, never will be, but I just find it interesting that he allegedly either quit or got fired at the peak of Modern Warfare 3 because they still got three or four DLC map packs coming down the pipe for this year. So something happened. They, he ticked off Activision somehow, or Activision was just tired of him saying that Call of Duty 4 was the best. We were trying to live up to it now, and then throwing in free DLC might make up for it. Nah, Activision might have been like, listen, we're out. We're, we're, we're running this milk cow, and we're going to keep running it. We need to shut them up. So that's maybe happened. We're, we're yeah, going to find out here, in the future. I, I think I could see, you know, Bobby Kotick, I'll give him this. I'll give Bobby Kotick, and I'm not a big fan of it, it, some of the comments and the statements he's made. But he, who is? Uh, Bob, me? <laughs> uh, I'm not no, a big fan. Who, who yeah, is a fan of him? I don't, Nobody. Think any, I don't think anyone would ever be. But he, the thing for me is he's been – Bobby Kotick has been very quiet, and he – you know, last year he made a lot of really just distasteful comments about what he would like to do with the industry, which is you know, good from a business standpoint, bad for consumers. Things about pretty much – slicing up the game every which way but still sell you every single piece and by the time you're done buying that disc and getting what you would have got for 65 bucks but now it's going to be well over 200 dollars i mean oh yeah and Fuck that. now that what bowling would do by giving away saying hey let's give them stuff that they you know they the consumer deserves that's in direct conflict of like the agenda that bobby kotick has made very clear that he wants to take not only his company but the industry and you charge consumers for everything subscriptions you want new weapons oh you're paying for that you want cutscenes oh you're paying for that you want you want oh, more yeah. story yep. that shit that was would have been in your five hours but now it's two hours and we're going to cut it up it, it's shit like that it, so if bowling came out and said that i could see you know kotick saying oh, i don't think so kid I don't think so. Wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be great if Bowling left and went to Dice and worked on Battlefield? Oh, <laughs> that would oh, be oh. I think it would be a jack in the gut if he went right over to you. What, what, well, you never know. Phil Harrison Most left what Sony. He's, in, he's at Microsoft now, so we don't know. Go ahead, Black. 
most well, likely what will happen is he'll go to respawn. Yep. He had he had oh, a really yeah that's right he had a really uh st- strong relationship with uh uh Zimpella and 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 West. those guys over there at uh who the newly formed studio at, at uh respawn. So if he'll go anywhere, it's most likely there. Um, uh, that would be great. Actually, I, I met Robert Bowen one time. He he's a, he's a a really vibrant, fun guy. Um, he probably had his industry face on then, but just you know the vibe that I got from him was that he's really passionate about what he does, and he is the the type of person that feels the community should come first. You know, he is he is Activision's because he wasn't he he not only worked for Activision. I mean, not only worked for Infinity Ward, but he also worked for Activision. And the fact that he stood by them after they, you know, they did a lot of the employees wrong um, shows that, you know, he's a real stand up guy um, and that he, he when he commits to something that he wants to see it through. But the fact that he's leaving now, you know, kind of makes me wonder what Activision, what what actually drew, pushed him to that point. Because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm almost to the point where it's like, you know, I might not buy the next Call of Duty mm-hmm. just based off the fact that if if they're trying to, because I'm, I'm and I was telling um, Travis this before, I'm getting really sick of being squeezed, <laughs> you know, as a consumer, you About know, time. by, by companies that, have, that are creating, not every... Everything, everything, you know, every title deserves after services. And I understand that those after services have to be paid for. But throw us, you know, a freebie every now and again. Don't, everything doesn't have to be 99 cents. Don't nickel and dime me. Especially at the prices where games are at now, which is an all-time high. And, you know, the average person doesn't know. And I'm, I'm going to let loose a little industry seeker right here. The companies only pay about thirteen to fifteen dollars per title, so everything after that is pure profit. Yeah, it's so uh, over a hundred percent markup. If, if that being said, that being said, you know, it's, and it's even it's even probably less now because you I don't know if you noticed. There's barely any instruction manuals included now in games. Yeah, they might have one two sheets. You know, yeah. so it could be it could be down to about eleven. You know, so that being said, if you're not, if it doesn't cost you, you know, this large sum of money to create a title, we and especially you know companies like you know Ubisoft and and, and Naughty Dog that they already have the um the, the engine in place, you already have the staff that's needed. You know, you already you don't have to do research and development on this project. There is no reason why day one you should have a ten dollar DLC deployment. That makes no sense. Agreed. You know, yeah. And him 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 leaving makes me feel like you know I I kind of want to leave with him because he's the community guy. He was the liaison between Activision and the community, and he was our representative within them. So and they also. What also re- reinforces that is the fact that he said that, you, that he felt DLC should be free. So he was fighting the good fight for the gamers. And, you know, I'm just, it's, I'm to the point where I'm almost disgusted. Like, I don't want to be nickel and dime. I don't want to be squeezed. You know, if you're, if, if we're, we're in this, we're in this, in the gaming community and the gaming industry, because this is something that we love. Don't, don't try to you know warp that into you know this don't become microsoft basically <laughs> <laughs> you know what you know what? Not, then, uh, you know <laughs> but hey because i want to get to dragon because dragon on this one was i'm dying to hear what he has to say because if you read his profile on twitter that he's a microsoft and activision hater so by all means <laughs> dragon jump in i'm dying to hear what you have to say about this but go ahead f- finish up uh, like i understand what you're saying no, I mean I pretty much finished. I, uh, I feel like, well, not not to, you know, veer off too far, but I, I really feel like, you know, they should have stood by him. I'm I'm saddened by the fact that 
he's leaving that company because I, I I was really used to seeing his face associated with the Call of Duty deployment drops. You know, he's a really a, a stand up guy, and I and I, I wish him the best, and I I hope that there's someone, at least one other person, that's willing to stand up for the gamers. You know, in that studio. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, like I said earlier, it's like Frank O'Connor leaving Halo and three four three to fend for themselves. I mean, yeah, I, me, and I don't want to talk, bring us into the Halo topic, but you know, with, with the new Halo Four coming out around the corner, I'm, I'm glad Frank O'Connor's still there because he's been there since day one. He threw thick and thin, so you know, at least he's there. At least I could say, hey, Halo Four is going to be at least a decent title in my eyes. Hopefully, it's a phenomenal title because Frank O'Connor's there. And let's see what he did. But with, with Robert Bowling there being so hands-on with the community and him not being there anymore, uh, you know, I just really, I mean, listen, we all know Bobby Kotek's all about the money. He's all about ripping the game apart and nickel and diamonds to death. That's what He did the same thing at Yahoo, and he's doing the same thing at Activision. He's just riding the train because eventually Call of Duty will fade out. But right now, it's a money maker, even though sales are down a little bit from Modern Warfare 3 compared to the previous titles. But they're still making a gazillion lot of money, especially with Elite. I'm surprised Elite's taken off as much as it is, which I think Elite's a joke, but that's my personal opinion. But Dragon... What, what, what do you uh, what do you got on this one? And I know you love Activision, so come on, bring it to heat. What do you got? <laughs> uh, I really don't know what to say about it. I mean, I don't really know the guy. I mean, I, I don't really follow the, the Call of Duty games that well. I mean, last uh, Call of Duty I, I got was uh, Call of Duty Four, and good for you. In my you opinion, in my opinion that was the uh, <laughs> the the best. In my, in my oh, it it is no question. No, I, I, I have to disagree, but, you know, that's not making a Call of Duty thing. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, it, Black, you know, since you said that, we, we won't because we're going to wrap up the show here in a few minutes. What is your favorite Call of Duty, if I don't mind me asking? It has to be Call of Duty Black Ops. I, I would that agree game, with you. Yeah. That I, game I, is I, the most bang for your buck, and it, 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 it was so well put together and so well crafted. This, you know... Yeah, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare story had, you know, a lot of explosive aspects and the set pieces and also it was one cohesive story. But Call of Duty Black Ops was just this movie. It was it was so intriguing to me. And then after you had that, the cherry on top was Nazi zombies. <laughs> that was I loved, fun. I love all of those deployments all of those that game type in itself was so much fun not only is it a, a horde mode but it it all you also have perks that you know similar to the multiplayer and it's just it was just so good like i, I i'm really liking i really like the treyarch you know version of call of duty and i will be getting black ops 2 but I, I i don't think i'm gonna be getting the um the, the next version from uh, Infinity War. I, I can tell you one thing from me. I, I am a Call of Duty fan over overall of the series. I mean, my favorite is Call of Duty 4 from a single player and multiplayer standpoint. I cannot I cannot stand Modern Warfare 2. And Modern, Modern Warfare 3 is what Modern Warfare 2 should have been, but it's still not the greatest. But I agree with you this one on Blacksmith. I think, I think, I think Black Ops was a phenomenal one, one of the best ones out of all of them. Um, great single player zombies and the multiplayer even though it was a little buggy in the beginning but what big huge multiplayer game isn't at first I like the balance of the game and I, I love I mean like playing on Nuketown I could play that map every day when I play by I still play Black Ops I yes. love Nuketown yes. is just one of those classic great maps that I hope they they take that map and put it in Black Ops 2 as a fan favorite you know because that Hall map of is fame been, Hall of Fame it, I agree. It's a Hall of Fame map. I mean, there's nothing like the cardboard cutout people standing in the middle of the street. And no matter how many times I see them, I still shoot those fuckers every once in a while thinking they're real. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those maps, man. It's a great game. And I love Black Ops. And even Black Ops got heat for not being this, not being that. But it had its own identity. It sold through the roof. And that was a great, great Call of Duty game. But you're right. The Infinity Ward versions of Call of Duty... Uh, I I mean, in that, well, let's just say the newly reformed Infinity War. I want nothing to do with it. I'm just I'm I'm just done with those guys. I'm done with the whole situation. Treyarch, when Treyarch comes out with a Call of Duty game, 
every two years, that's the one I'm going to buy. Infinity War ones, go go away. You know, I'm, I'm done with it. It just, you know, and, and I am interested to see this, you know, rumor or not rumor, it's official, Call of Duty for the Vita. I'm real curious to see what that's going to look like and who's developing that, who's behind that. That's going to be an interesting aspect, but we'll see. Um, but before we wrap up the show, anybody else got uh, anything to say to you about this? No. Wager your matches. Yes, wager matches are great. No, and, and sticks and stones, <laughs> and, and um, what was the one? Love what's the one with the? What's the ladders one where you um, going up? When you shoot, you kill somebody, you get a new weapon, and you keep going up and up. What the hell is that called? Oh man, you know I what I'm talking about. I know. Yeah, I do know what you're talking about. Gun game. <laughs> Gun game, yes. Gun game is incredible. That's a that's a fun mode. But uh, yeah, Black Ops brought, brought a lot of um, a lot of cool stuff. One of the rumors I'm hearing about Black Ops 2 is that I'm not happy about. They're gonna get rid of the RXD. Come on, man, that fucking thing was great. <laughs> I, I I love running up behind campers and just blowing up that little RC car, man. I thought it was cool. I hope they don't take that away. I, I love purchased it. I purchased the collector's edition of Call of Duty Black Ops. And I have the remote control RC car, and I still play with it. I love it. <laughs> Does it really work good? I mean, is it good? It, it's it's a little slow. It, it's not like you know, it's not like the RC brand. It's well, not out so there, it's you know, tearing so it up. But it's 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 a good nostalgic piece. I think I feel it's the best collector's edition piece that I've ever had. Yeah, just be careful when you say the word slow. Travis is on the podcast. He gets offended. Da, da. <laughs> All right, guys, let's wrap up the show tonight. Thanks for everybody coming on board. Uh, check us out on Twitter. Check out our website, GamerSwagger.com. Uh, appreciate you guys listening. Until next week, we are out.